Hey guys, so this is going to be my reaction, review, whatever you want to call it for Wrestlemania 31. I wanted to let a week go by first because usually when you watch things live you're a bit hyped up and your your reaction and thoughts on things are um, a lot different after you've left it to settle down for a few days and you come back and reassess everything that you've seen. While while I was watching it live, I did um, keep my laptop beside me and I was writing down my thoughts on the on each match as it was going by. So I've got um, e each match here on my laptop beside me and I've got the thoughts that I was writing down and what I thought. I, I gave it each match like a score out of five stars and um, basically noted down things that I thought were important. And um, I'm going to read some of that off to you guys now and uh, just talk about what I think going through each match. So why don't we start off with the two pre-Mania matches, which were the Tag Team Titles match and the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. So the Tag Team Title match was pretty much just... I think it was just filler. You know, it was just there to... to basically to add a little bit more content because they had to put some sort of tag team thing on, they had to have the tag team titles there I mean the match, I don't think anyone cared about it, none of the tag teams are interesting um, I, I just, I don't know what's happened with tag team wrestling but there was nothing interesting about it, the match was average, you know it was okay I, I, I gave it 2 out of 5 stars just for the point of you know, I mean, it was it was okay. It wasn't bad, but um, really nothing much to say on that. So that's pretty much how I feel about the, that match. The Andre the Giant uh, Memorial Battle Royal was was um, okay. I gave that three out of five stars. Um, it it was it was good in some areas. I really like the the ending part where you had uh, Miz Dow and Miz coming together and finally Miz, Miz Dow snapping and turning on the Miz and eliminating him and I think uh, my prediction at that point you know I was pretty confident the Miz, uh, Miz Dow was going to end up winning but um, Big Show went on to win which I think is fair you know I think he really should have won the first one um, and then retired after the first one and it would have been a bit more symbolic the Big Show winning the first ever Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal and then letting it continue from then on because he's you know the, the most similar um in size and everything to Andre the Giant um he's been with the WWE uh for so for so long and he's done so much for the company you know he's him and Kane have kind of ruined their reputations a bit with this authority shit that they've been doing for the the last however long but um I think those two guys both need to retire and I think that was their way of giving the big show like a leaving present almost but I think the the key the the most important thing with that match was the Miz Dow and Miz um relationship breakdown that was really interesting in there in that um match and obviously we had uh, Curtis Axel uh with Axel Mania being eliminated first that was hilarious I really enjoyed that as well so there's a few moments in that match that I really liked that's why I gave it three out of five stars I was leaning towards two out of five stars but I gave it three out of five because of that but um yeah on to uh, Wrestlemania itself we have the Intercontinental title ladder match which um, Daniel Bryan came out on top I gave that three out of five stars um I had a, a good few moments um but I in all honesty I think I felt when I was watching it that it was rushed it was over quite quick and I felt for that match I just feel like they could have I'm not saying I want them to go out getting hurt but uh, Dean Ambrose went through the the ladder with that I think Luke Harper put him through the ladder and um yeah, so he took a bump there, but then he didn't really get back up for the rest of the match after that. He just kind of lay there, which is pretty bullshit, to be honest. Um, I, I I would have liked to have seen them do more of that match because I thought it had the potential to be a four, a four out of stars match. Um, three out of five is what I would give that one uh, because, like I said, just felt rushed. Um, there wasn't enough people putting their bodies on the line. I mean, this is the this is the the biggest stage of a, of. Ever, all wrestling, you know, you, this is where you should take the, your chance to shine, and I don't think they really took that many risks. Um, the people in the match, I thought it was, you know, it's weird watching a ladder match where you don't see that much risk involved, but um, hey, maybe they didn't want to injure too many stars because the roster's that weak at the moment, so they might have told them backstage just to keep it calm, only take a few bumps. But anyway, uh, Daniel Bryan came out on top, new Intercontinental Champion. 
Next match, Orton and Rollins. That was a really, really good match. I gave this match a uh, 4 out of 5 stars. I really enjoyed watching this. Um, it was good back and forth between them. You know, I think the match is pretty even, you know, all, all throughout it. Um, Randy Orton came out on top with what is one of his best RKO finishes. Uh, uh, he just, like, flicked Rollins <laughs> high in the air and just landed that and then just did his Viper strike. You, the Viper has struck again. But, yeah, it was great to see Orton win. I think I was, I was pretty confident Seth Rollins was going to win that one, but... Um, yeah, Orton, I think we know why Orton won it now, because Rollins went on to inevitably come out of Mania as the champion. Um, so I think that's why they felt comfortable giving Orton the win over him there. Um, but I think uh, Rollins uh, did a really good job in the match, so did Orton, and it was a really enjoyable match to watch. Four out of five stars. Um Next match, uh, Sting versus Triple H. Now, when I was watching this, I gave it five out of five stars, but I've... I've watched WrestleMania like I've down I downloaded it after I watched it live on the WWE network, but um I downloaded it after that and I've been uh watching it a few times back and I think I wanna knock that from a five five out of five you know what? No, I'll I'll keep it five out of five stars for that match. Um well uh <sighs> I can't decide between five or four out of stars, but five or four out of five stars. Um, there was a there was a couple of things I didn't like about the match. Um, not necessarily the match. Um, I thought Triple H and Sting did quite good together. It was it was it was really short though. Um, I I don't know. If, I don't know if it was something to do with the injury. If you if you watch it back, you'll see Triple H has an injury on his leg. He's got this giant bruise all down the back of his hamstring or something. Um, I don't know what happened uh, backstage uh, or in the weeks leading up to it that he got injured, but um, I don't know if that was why or if it was just because of Sting's age. They wanted to make it a shorter match, but um, there was a lot of stuff to fill the match out um, that's made it entertaining. While watching it, I was like just over the top hyped I don't know if it was just the the kid in me like seeing Sting there and everything but the first thing I noticed that I really didn't like is um both of the entrances I mean Sting had a bunch of Asian guys on stage you know doing his entrance I really don't know what that was about I, I don't think he needed that I think he could have just came out to a normal entrance and then Triple H had to have this bloody Terminator gimmick which just looked over the top and it it you could see Sting in the ring waiting. He was like sitting down, like he was always having a coffee break, you know, waiting on Triple H's entrance to finish. You know, it was taking far too long, and it took me out of the the mood of seeing St- Sting get in the ring and you know going woo and all this kind of stuff, and then waiting around so long for Triple H. It just kind of it took something away from the start of the match. Then they went back and forth, had a had a good bit of action, you know, Sting and Triple H put on a good little show um, eventually as uh, Sting's getting the upper hand you know, DX come running out their, their music hits and they try to stop uh, Sting and Sting battles back, knocks them down and then Triple H starts to come back, then he gets thrown over the rope Sting goes up to the top rope, jumps off of the top rope, outside of the ring, knocking all of DX out, which was pretty awesome. Eventually, um, it turns around and uh, Triple H starts to get the better of Sting after DX interfere and stuff. And then the NWO music hits. Hogan, Nash and Hall all come out and um, they take down DX and help Sting. And then it's back to being an even match. But then uh, towards the end of the match, Triple H sneaks a sledgehammer, knocks out Sting and pins him for the free count, uh, which was probably the biggest shock of the night because I really don't know why Sting waited all this time and then let Triple then put Triple H over when he came. I, I was pretty sh- I, that was the only match I was like one hundred percent sure I was. I would bet my house on it that Sting was going to win, and th- he didn't. So at least it, the WrestleMania, if anything, has been unpredictable because I didn't see that coming. Um, and uh, yes. So that was another prediction I got wrong, but um, overall the match I really enjoyed it. I thought the pacing was very good in it, you know, um, to to help Sting out and maybe because of Triple H's injury, you know. But they were going back and forth, different things with DX coming in and the weapons being brought in in the NWO. It was just, it was a really, really, it was a it was a match for wrestling fans. This one, you know, had some good wrestling action. You had these great guys. Um, from the past coming out that you wanted to see uh, again and stuff yeah, the NWO and DX the two big factions from WWF and WCW at the time you know uh, it was pretty awesome to see them all together and uh, yeah that was that was uh, one of the best matches of the night 
Next, there was the Divas Tag Team match, which now I just found out that AJ Lee has retired from wrestling, which is pretty sad. But um, yeah, the Divas Tag Team match was it was pretty boring, um, it, and it was too short. Women in the WWE need more time. They they need more time for their matches, and they need some of the NXT women to come up and fill out all this crap that you've got in the Divas on Raw and SmackDown. That you need to, uh, I think you need Flair to come up <coughs> and um, a few of the others from NXT who are putting on some of the best matches in NXT right now, the the women in, in NXT. So it would be quite cool if we can get some of them up because other than Paige and, and now AJ is gone, you know, I really don't see anyone that's um, enjoyable to watch from a wrestling point of view from the out of all the divas on Raw and SmackDown right now. But yeah, I gave that um, 1 out of 5 stars just because it was boring and I didn't really care about it and the Bellas are really just kind of, you know, I don't care. They, they don't do anything to make me care, you know, they they just clearly, you know, they, they, they're clearly there because Daniel Bryan's one of the, the I think he's husband now, isn't he? And Cena is um, with, Cena's with... Uh, N- what is it? Cena's with Nikki and Brian's with uh, Brie, and that's the only reason they're there because they're clearly not any more talented than anyone on the the roster. Um, so next match was Rusev and Cena. That was a great match. I gave that four out of five stars. I thought the the back and forth between them was really really good. Um, uh, Lana, Lana looks stunning again, you know, with her long legs. Uh, Rusev came out in a tank, but yeah, I, uh, I knew, I knew Cena was going to come out on top there. I, I thought that was the the best way to get rid of Rusev's streak, so that he doesn't have that hanging over him, so people aren't focusing on his undefeated streak so much. So losing to Cena at WrestleMania doesn't hurt him in a huge way because uh, Cena's like a fifteen-time champion, so they've gotten rid of the streak, and now Rusev will go on and do. Lots of uh, good stuff in the WWE, I think. But yeah, I really enjoyed that match. Four out of five stars. Next, I've put it. Um, before we talk about the next match, was which was Bray Wyatt and Undertaker. We had a little segment with uh, the Authority and The Rock coming out and Ronda Rousey. Which, um, if if I'm gonna rate that as well, that was five out of five because that was awesome. You know, St- Stephanie and Triple H came down as if in this kind of mood where they started off speaking as if they were saying thank you to all the fans and everything for making this WrestleMania great. Blah 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 blah. And the WWE Network and they seemed like they were genuinely being nice. And then they turned it around saying how they own us all and and just being the usual dicks that they are and that was really cool and then The Rock's music hit and he comes down and then Stephanie's her usual self telling the fans yeah 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 blah 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 you're you, we know you're happy to see him just shut up now and then she eventually slaps The Rock and tells him to get out of the ring after The the Rock tries to get a match with Triple H and Triple H uh, refuses and the slap she gives Rock oh he had to compose himself pretty well there because it was one of the best slaps he's ever done but he walks out the ring he looks like he's going to walk back up the the ramp but he doesn't he turns he goes round the right side of the ring and stops in front of Ronda Rousey um who's sitting there at the the side the front row of the at the right side wearing a Vegeta top uh, it's over 9000 9, which is uh pretty excuse me which is pretty awesome but yeah Ronda Rousey's sitting there uh, he just looks at her extends out the hand she jumps over the thing comes in the ring and then uh, it all kicks off from there Ro- Rock and Ronda team up on Triple H and Steph uh, The Rock beats the crap out of Triple H Triple H walks over to R- Ronda all stunned she judo throws him over her shoulder uh, he rolls out the ring then she grabs Stephanie by the arm it would have been nice to see her put Stephanie in an armbar but I think uh, maybe they were worried about Stephanie's boobs popping out or something you know but but um, he, she she just kind of holds her slightly to the shoulder and twists her arm back for a few seconds then she throws her out the ring um and then they scurry off and then the Rock and Ronda have their little uh, moment with the fans with a cheer. But it was pretty awesome. I really enjoyed that. It, it was a really good way of um, keeping the energy in the crowd alive while breaking up a little bit of time in between matches and keeping it balanced. Um, before that as well, uh, I forgot to mention as well, we had Skylar Grey out who was awesome. Her performance um, for the WrestleMania theme song was awesome. Um, she was right on the, the money with her 
vocals. Then we had this uh, little guy come out and do some rap shit, talking about, you know, we got money in the bank, we got money in the bank. Oh, shut the fuck up. I was like, shouting at the screen to get him off. But, um, yeah, so we had different parts throughout WrestleMania where we got different types of entertainment, which were good, apart from that little guy doing the rap song, which uh, were really enjoyable. Then we get on to the next match, which was Bray Wyatt versus The Undertaker. It's really weird to see these guys coming out in the daytime. But, um, yeah, Bray Wyatt comes out and Undertaker comes back looking much, much better than he did last year. You know, just physically, just, just his face as well is more filled out. He looked a bit beef, beefed up and everything. Um, he, he still looks like he's just not the Undertaker of old. But he, and I think the fans were a bit quiet for that match because I think people were really nervous because they, were, they weren't they were sure if Undertaker was going to lose again and they were a bit kind of worried about that happening. But um, when Undertaker's music hit, I just, I marked right out and just really enjoyed it. And uh, he eventually uh, beat Bray Wyatt after doing some of his signature moves, you know, the going up top, top of the ropes and um, doing the big leg drop on the outside of the ring. Uh, with uh, Bray's neck kind of hanging out from the bottom of the ropes. A um, few tombstones, Bray Wyatt got Sister Abigail in. Really, really enjoyable match. I gave that one um, four out of five stars. It wasn't the it wasn't the best match, but I, I really enjoyed it because seeing those two together, it, it was such a perfect combination, and um, I was really happy with Undertaker getting the win there. So, on to the final match, which was 5 out of 5 stars, because it was the best match of the night. Lesnar versus Roman Reigns. It was just it was just really an amazing match. Um, Lesnar's got a lot of shit from people about, about not being um, a company guy and everything, and I've explained why I, I disagree with that, you know, because he doesn't have to be, you know. He, he goes there, he puts his whole persona, his whole... His whole body language, everything about him, he his performance is... That's why the WWE love him so much, because his performance is better than anyone on the roster. He goes in there, he puts f- all the intensity in the world into his performance, and he looks badass. And he starts off the match, he gets cut very early from Roman Reigns, a real cut, you know, um, must have just been from clashing the gloves, maybe scraping against his cheek. But uh, Lesnar pretty much dominates the first half of the match really brutally throwing him around even has the famous uh, after he suplexed him he stands up and goes suplex city bitch and uh, which has now became like a quite popular meme but um yeah he he took roman reigns to suplex city and um, he even he, he just kind of like beat the shit out of him for the first part roman reigns uh, starts to get a little bit of a comeback Le- lesnar now beats the shit out of him again and again uh Roman Reigns only really turns the match around a little bit and gets a good strong comeback when he pushes Lesnar into the ring post on the outside. Lesnar gets busted up and uh, looks kind of dizzy and dazed. Roman gets in a few Superman punches, a few spears. Um, He can't do the job though, he can't get him away. Lesnar fights back, eventually gets the F5, and then you hear you hear that bloody slimy snake music, Seth Rollins just hits, and Seth Rollins comes running down, and you know that he's about to cash in the money in the bank. He cashes it in. Um, Lesnar, Lesnar reverses after getting curb stomped. The, the next one gets him in an F5 position, but Roman Reigns spears Lesnar, taking him out, and um, Lesnar rolls out the ring, and then Roman Reigns gets cub stomped by Seth Rollins and Seth wins the title. Overall, I think the whole entire performance of this match was awesome. It's really a match you need to go and watch. Um, five out of five. Every every guy in there, even even Reigns, Reigns deserves so much credit for this match as well. His performance was awesome. Uh, apart from the, the way he smiled awkwardly during it, you know, if you're going to do that thing where you try to laugh like, come on, hit me again, hit me again, you know, like, I, I, I can take it, I can take your best shot. You could have made it look a bit more convincing than just his awkward, <laughs> kind of smile. But, um, yeah, Lesnar looked phenomenal again. Reigns looked really, really good. And Seth did his really annoying part. I, I still wish Lesnar was um, the champ, but... Um, I think Lesnar has gone from being the heel to the tweener and now he, if you've just watched the most recent Raw, he's definitely a full-fledged babyface now and um, I think it's going to be a big story now with him against the authority and Seth Rollins. But yeah, WrestleMania, overall I gave the entire show uh, 4 out of 5 stars. 
There was some really, really good matches. You know, um, the Randy Orton, Seth Rollins, Sting versus Triple H, the Rusev versus Cena, Bray Wyatt versus Undertaker, and Lesnar versus Reigns. They were all great, great matches. You had um, a few disappointing matches. Uh, the the um, tag team titles and uh, the Divas match were pretty boring. You had a, a decent little Intercontinental title match, and you know, overall, the show. This is. It really, really surprised me because I've been watching wrestling since the 90s. I'm I'm a huge fan. Um, That's when I got into it. And I pretty much fell off around about the end of 2007, start of 2008. That's where I fell off wrestling. And I just completely stopped watching it for about, well, until about the start of 2014. That's when I started watching wrestling again. And I've been slowly getting back into it since the for the first half of 2014 and then I've been watching it like pretty much every show and can't stop watching it now that I'm right back to the point where I used to be but I fell off for a good few years there in that era where you know you had I mean god people like Sheamus and The Miz being like the top guys in the company being, holding the title is that that is ridiculous I'm so glad that we've got people like Seth Rollins coming up Rusev Ambrose even Reigns, um, who gets a lot of shit at the moment that he doesn't deserve. Um, they've got lots and lots of good talent coming through that is going to carry the company forward in the next few years and is going to produce some great content. I really hope they they cut away from this PG shit and they just... They don't need to go full out blood and everything. It's never going to be like the Attitude again, but, era again, but they need, they need to give it just more Attitude without going to the attitude level if you know what I mean things like the if you watch the raw after mania that was that was great that was one of the best raws I've seen in a long time just Brock Lesnar doing all the shit he did there at the side the matches were all awesome on the card that is the way raw should be every week and um if they're not if they're gonna keep smackdown as some sort of little um you know kind of side show then 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 make it that but I would like to see smackdown have I would like to see SmackDown feel like a continuation of Raw rather than just a little bit of content to keep us busy until the next Raw. But um, yeah, that that was my uh, review for WrestleMania 31. I highly enjoyed it. It really, really surprised me. I didn't think with um, all the... My, my point before about why I was saying about how I fell off wrestling and everything is um, while I fell off, the only thing that I would go back and watch is the WrestleManias and I've not really enjoyed a WrestleMania to be honest, um, this much in a long time. It was a uh, great, great performance. I think the WWE really, really need um, a lot of credit for that. That was uh, a great show. And um, I hope you guys all enjoyed it too. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed the, the Raw Aftermania. And um, I hope you guys enjoyed this review.